Hello out there. We're on the air. Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day. What a Wednesday it is. Holy cow. I had a great morning today. Beautiful outside, beautiful weather, beautiful sunrise. And I was listening to my favorite soundtrack of all time. Remember the Titans. Man, if you ever need to be in a be put into a good mood, if you're ever feeling down, just toss on the Remember the Titans soundtrack. Guaranteed to turn your mood around anytime. Although I do have a bit of a headache today. So it's not ideal, not what we love. But we're here. It's Wednesday. We'd like to welcome everybody on YouTube, on zap.stream. Let's see who's over there. Zero viewers on zap.stream so far. Oh, no. Crypto Heathen's over there. We got a few viewers. It was just taking some time to catch up. If you do want to participate in the zap.stream, I created a new goal today. It's called Just Because We Can. Just because we can. Why not? So you can send uh, you can send some Bitcoin over there to the content creator or the people in the chat, whatever you want to do. It's just, I don't know. I love Zap.stream. So big shout out to everybody over there. You can find that very easily on whatever you're watching on. You can go to bitcoinjourney.ca slash stream, and I'll take you right there to the Zap.stream feed. I got to realize I got to change my hat here. Can't have any backwards hats on a Wednesday. What the hell am I thinking? What are we thinking here? Anyways, good morning. Welcome back to another episode of the Daily Bitcoin Journey. Actionable and logical discussion for Bitcoiners and for future Bitcoiners. Today we got a good show. We're talking about the Flintstones, kind of. Uh, for those who have been, for those who have been in the chat and in the watching the show for a while, we've been talking about the Jetsons a little bit. And especially if you're in the living in the future side of things, the the membership, that's uh, the Jetsons are a big part of what we're doing in there right now. So I saw a quote that involves the Flintstones. I wanted to talk about that today. And that's what we're going to do because we can. So sorry, I'm just sharing the link to uh, Nostra here. And then we'll get back to business. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. So the metrics today, where are we at? Sorry, good morning, Mr. Bond. James Bond is in the house. Have a tremendous day. Johnny's in the house. And our friend Kosh Jello. Good morning, fellas. Hope everybody's had a, a good start to the day, as good as me. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to talk yourself into things. But today has been a good day, for sure. We got a busy one. Go heading into the big city today. Got to get some of our brand new King Golf gear for the year. So pretty exciting. I'll take this down for a second, just quickly touch on it. I'm heading into the city today. I'm picking up a very large package of King Golf polos, King Golf quarter zips, and so a lot of hats. So this is the first year that we're actually going to be in pro shops. This is our fifth year in business. Uh, our, our main product is leather head covers, custom leather head covers. But we started doing some apparel too. So this is the very first summer that we're going to be in pro shops across Manitoba. So pretty exciting stuff. I'm going to pick up the package today. Got to organize it all, put tags on it, and then get it shipped out to the golf courses. So I think within this uh, email or the YouTube here, you can actually see the products on, on the videos. I don't know if I ever turn it on or not, but uh, if you're interested, if you're a golfer or you just like nice stuff, head over to King Golf, K-N-G golf.ca. We are a small business. We are a small business that accepts Bitcoin. So get in touch if you want some nice stuff. Dan is in the house. Good morning, my friend. Rock and roll. Tommy D, lots going on. So we are currently block height 837, 544. 
How's everything? How's the stream so far? Good. I've made a couple changes here. Hopefully everything's sounding okay. And a little bit less lag. Had a couple bad episodes there. But if you're transacting on Bitcoin layer one, it's incredibly cheap to be doing right now. 10 sats per V-byte. 10 sats. And about four blocks ago, you could have been paying seven sats. So if you are sending any Bitcoin today on layer one, definitely set it to be a pretty low fee. I think one of these days in the near future, I'm going to do a show that goes through a whole Bitcoin transaction. And I think it's just kind of cool for people who maybe aren't as familiar with Bitcoin. I mean, it's, it's one thing to buy Bitcoin, send it to your own wallet on your phone and just kind of, you know, that's your Bitcoin story so far. But if you actually go through the process of sending Bitcoin, like getting a Sparrow wallet, having your UTXOs there, sending some Bitcoin, watching it in the mempool, and then setting a transaction fee based on that. I think it's a pretty cool. Maybe for Friday or maybe for next week. But anyways, I, I got to get a few things set up for that because I have to fund the wallet first that I can move things out of. So that's, uh, that's where we're at today. Let's get to the rest of the metrics here. The price of Bitcoin today, not April 2nd, it is April 3rd. Fees, seven sats per V-byte, very low. The price is about the same as yesterday, 65,000 US dollars. One year ago today, it was 27,000 US dollars. And four years ago today, you could have purchased one Bitcoin for 6,752 US dollars. Damn. The Moscow time, one US dollar. Was anybody in this chat? Uh, that's a pretty personal question. I was going to ask anybody in this chat was buying Bitcoin at $6,700. I was buying Bitcoin at $69,000 back in 2021. <laughs> but I wasn't buying it for 67. dollars uh, No, it was, it was higher than that. It was later in 2020. So that's where we're at today. The Moscow time today, one US dollar will get you 1,515 sats. The deal of a lifetime. I say that every day because it is the truth. Anytime you can exchange any amount of fiat, monopoly, illusionary dollars for Bitcoin, it's a good deal at any price. One's going up forever, one's going down forever. It's not that hard to, uh, oh, I got the wrong screen on here. What am I doing? What are we doing here? This is the very first episode of the Bitcoin journey. There we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> Here in Canada, the price of one Bitcoin today is 89,458 Canadian dollars. Moose jaw time today, which is the equivalent of Moscow time here in Canada. One loony will get you 1,115 sats. Uh, Oh, gosh, Jill, I think we're talking about the Bitcoin transaction that I think so, too. I think it's just a really good exercise for people to see everything from start to finish in terms of a Bitcoin transaction, because the majority of people have not done that. Even if you have Bitcoin, I still think that the majority of people in Bitcoin have never gone through a full transaction like that and see the whole inner workings of it behind the curtain, I guess you'd say, and look at uh, everything that happens throughout the transaction and how fucking cool it is. Sorry, too early for swearing. Jose was buying, but barely making any money back then, so he could barely stack. Yeah, that's fair. Rock and roll says any top and any dip is a smash buy. Amen. Okay, what's going on over on the zap.stream? Daniel's over there. Daniel has zapped 121 sats. Thank you, my friend. And Kosh Jello in both chats. Love to see that. Says they need a Bitcoin emoji already. And Daniel says, I like the gear. Don't play golf, but I do play disc golf. Interesting. Interesting. I've, I've always wanted to play disc golf. I've, wa <laughs> I've watched it on TV. I think it was one night after a couple beers or something. And I was watching disc golf at about two in the morning. It was just on TSN, I think, here in Canada. 
And it was actually very entertaining to watch. Very entertaining. They're very nerdy, even nerdier than golfers. But it was it was really cool to see the different uh, strategies they had, the different weights of the discs, and some of the shots they were able to pull off. Pretty cool. It is something that I would love to try one day is disc golf. It's just I'd rather golf. So if the sun's shining, I'm going to be on the golf course. Maybe we'll do some winter golf, winter disc golf. Anyways, moving on. Where's my list here? Okay, a couple things I want to talk about first. First one is I want to give a shout, uh, not a shout out, but um, a success story from yesterday. So yesterday we talked about Gray Ridge Coffee. They're a small business here in Manitoba. They accept Bitcoin. They what, roast their own beans here in Manitoba. So we talked about it on the show yesterday. I gave a discount code for the website. And it sounds like yesterday from people reaching out to me, it sounds like they had two or three orders already, including a couple in Bitcoin. So that's pretty cool. After one show, they had some sales from, I, I knew that Bitcoiners, Bitcoiners just love supporting other Bitcoiners. And so the, the more we can connect each other and put buyers and sellers together and sellers and buyers, the better off we'll be. Because in this system, there is no middleman. And when there's no middleman, that's when you save money. So you store your spending cash in Bitcoin, you connect with other Bitcoiners, and you end up saving a shitload of your purchasing power every single month. So Gray Ridge Coffee, I think it's grayridgecoffee.ca. Let me check just so I get it right. I didn't write it down yesterday. Grayridgecoffee.ca. I'll put a link below too. So if you are somebody who drinks coffee, you want to support a Bitcoin or local business, then make sure to toss an order their way. So that was a success story for today. Let's talk about the, the news here for today. We don't have much. There's not a whole lot going on in Bitcoin right now, honestly. So the good news for everybody is that it's going to be a quick news. Tommy D says, disc golfer there as well. Jose's golfing yesterday? What? Where? Actually, don't, don't dox yourself, but if you want to. Morning, Robert. Oh, you can't get in the States? Really? It's not ideal. I'll have to check with him on that. But it could be something to do with the food guidelines or the food regulations. But I'll check with that. This is a great comment here from Jose. He says, I grew up in a Jewish community. Jewish community support other Jewish small businesses, doctors, lawyers, handymen. Bitcoiners want to, also want to support the Bitcoin community. I agree. I've been absolutely blown away with the level of support and just wanting to do whatever people can to push things forward in Bitcoin. That's what's kept me here so far. You know, the Bitcoin's cool, it's a cool currency. It's a good store of value. But it is really the community of Bitcoiners and how just driven everybody is to make change in the world. And part of that change is supporting each other and supporting each other's ventures and collaborating on different things and different ventures to further the movement here. So that's a great that's a great comment there, Jose. And I do think that Bitcoiners are kind of going through the exact same thing right now. And it's only going to continue to grow. That's a cool thing about it. So the big news yesterday, the Bitcoin news, we talk about every sh every show, just catch up on what's going on in the world of Bitcoin. Oh, I didn't bring up this tweet. Fuck. Oh, well. So the Bitcoin news on this show is sponsored by Bitcoin news. My favorite resource every single morning, I log into Twitter. Pretty much the only thing I do on Twitter anymore is look at Bitcoin news and Thomas from Apollo. That's about it. Everything else is just a complete waste of time on Twitter complete it, it my blood pressure rises I get angry I probably have to see some sort of clip from either Justin Trudeau or one of the other clowns in our government so I just don't even go to the, the feed I just search Bitcoin news and so we talk about it pretty much every day on the show they have a great 
Twitter feed. They have a great website and a new YouTube channel. So make sure to show some uh, show some support to Bitcoin News. Head over there, follow them, check them out on YouTube, give them a subscribe because they're doing great things. It's nice to have some unbiased Bitcoin news that you can actually trust. I, I love the decentralization of all these different new media companies, but it is nice where you can just have a place you can go to that you can kind of count on. So that's Bitcoin news. But yesterday, the U.S. government sold 30,000 Bitcoin worth about $2 billion. I think it was still part of the Silk Road uh, seize, I guess. If I'm not mistaken, that's what I understand. But anyways, so the U.S. government dummies sold 30,000 Bitcoin yesterday, $2 billion worth. And a couple things I saw on that worth mentioning. The first one is that the U.S. government, as I said, sold 30,000 Bitcoin yesterday. This enables them to cover two thirds of their daily interest on payments that service national debt. So the U.S. government went through all this trouble selling 30,000 Bitcoin yesterday. And what were they able to get from from that sale? Two thirds of their daily interest on payments that service their debt. That's what we talked yesterday. We talked about why everything's so expensive right now. People think it's money printing. People think it's greedy CEOs. But in reality, all of your energy, or not all of it, but a good portion of it, every day, whatever you do, if you pay your taxes, part of that, a big portion of that, goes to paying the government's debt. So... Once that kind of sets into your brain and you realize what's actually happening here, very demotivating, very hard to continue operating in that system. The Flintstone era, we'll call it. So that's part of it. Samson Mao also had a tweet and he said that the U.S. government selling $30,000 or 30,000 Bitcoin is essentially like Chuck E. Cheese holding 30,000 Bitcoin and selling those Bitcoin for Chuck E. Cheese tokens. <laughs> so the government sold Bitcoin for their own currency back so they could pay off two thirds of their interest, daily interest. It, this is the, okay, I need to, I can't get down a, a rabbit hole in the government. I need to, I need to check myself. But this is the kind of people that we're up against. Rick Costa, my man, half the watchers forgot to smash the like. There's still time. What was your comment yesterday, Rick? I had a good laugh at that. Um, I talked about this on, on Monday, but if you haven't done it yet, make sure you go check out Rick's channel. I love watching every time I open up YouTube, I see Rick on my shorts feed. And it's just nice. He's a very positive, uplifting guy. And I highly recommend if you want some a bright spot in your day, go check out Rick Costa's channel. He's got some really good shorts on there every day. He does a daily short. Rock and roll says there's no second best signal at the 88 sats radio. My man. Positive note, U.S. government selling Silk Road Bitcoin on the open market makes any makes calling any Bitcoin dirty or laundered. A tad inconvenient, yes. So it's it's kind of ironic that they're they seize this Bitcoin from the Silk Road, and now they're selling it to the open market. It's kind of like uh, Ross; he was the guy who started the Silk Road. And I'm not going to get too far into it, but I would recommend checking out Jack Mauler's. Silk Road and SBF and how they tie together and how insane it is that Ross is still in jail for basically selling like I don't I don't know what the buzzwords are here on YouTube that I'll get in trouble for but like weed uh, mushrooms he was he was just provided a marketplace for people to buy and sell there was some harder stuff on there obviously but I mean if you look at he Jack, Jack didn't talk about this but if you look at Vancouver right now, BC and Canada, they've legalized the majority of these hard drugs. 
So Ross went to jail for providing a marketplace for people to buy and sell these things that are basically all legal now, plus Bitcoin, with Bitcoin. That was their big thing. That's why he got a life sentence in jail for facilitating this or for providing a marketplace for people. And so that's kind of, I don't know. It, it just really pissed the guy off it's, and it's not right at all. So go check out Jack Mahler's uh, episode from Monday. He gets into it a little bit further. Kyler says, was the, that's a new face in the chat. Good morning, my friend. Was the Bitcoin actually sold? I heard it only was transferred to Coinbase. Could be that. But I mean, why would they be tra transferring it to Coinbase if they were going to keep it? I don't know. That's just what I saw. I just read my teleprompter. <laughs> uh, Daniel says, sub, looking forward to watching Rick. Yeah, you'll get, uh, you'll, you'll get some positivity for your day watching Rick. Daniel says, that's probably who dropped the price like a rock yesterday. Yeah, also ironic they're using Coinbase. Everything is just so so backwards in the world right now. But the good news is is we've kind of hit the peak pendulum. It's got to the top of it. Now it's starting to gravity pulls it back. And hopefully we don't go too far the other way. But if we do, I think it'll be we'll be in a better spot. So I don't know why I'm talking so quietly sometimes today. I feel like this new mic, I don't really need to talk too loudly. So Maybe, maybe we'll just turn this into like a AMSR show. How do we feel about that? Whoa, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to bring up the next tweet here. <laughs> I just ruined any ASMR we just had with that big face on there. <laughs> okay, so speaking of dummies, from Bitcoin News, this is according to BlackRock. We haven't seen the end of cycles in Bitcoin. When the price goes up or down, the probabilities of success are also changing. So you create reflex, ref, I don't know what that, how to say that word, reinforcing the idea that you're going to have cycles. Certainly, returns going forward will decrease, says BlackRock. So BlackRock doesn't think that we're going to have much of an increase in the future for Bitcoin. So that's kind of shitty. I really value and respect what BlackRock has to say about Bitcoin. So take this with a little bit of grain of salt. Uh, Black, BlackRock's basically been saying this for the last 10 years before they went into the ETF, before they had the most successful ETF launch in their history. They think that it's probably done. The majority of people are already into Bitcoin. So there's really no need to, to pay attention to Bitcoin anymore. It's over. BlackRock says Bitcoin returns likely to come down now that it has been embraced by Wall Street. Is that so? Who in their right mind would not only say that, but actually go as far as putting that on the internet? BlackRock says Bitcoin returns likely to come down now that it has been embraced by Wall Street. The stuff drives me nuts, but at the same time, that's why I'm doing the show is to just talk things logic, talk through things logically and have some sort of common sense that I feel like is missing in the clown world. So Bitcoin has been embraced by Wall Street. Yes. Has all of Wall Street purchased it yet? No, I would say about a fraction of a percent of Wall Street has got some exposure to Bitcoin so far. We're still in the, the warm ups here in the game. We, the, we haven't even started the first inning yet. The game hasn't started. But BlackRock's out there saying that probably going to come down. There's no increase coming. Wall Street's already bought it up, so it's done. So like I said, BlackRock has been saying this exact same thing for the last 10 years as they were leading up to the ETF so they could buy more. And now they're going to continue saying it so they continue buying more. Because in order for BlackRock to get more Bitcoin, you have to sell your Bitcoin. So... They do want the price to go up, but they also want you to sell your Bitcoin. So there you go. Just a little bit more motivation, I think, to hold on to those, whatever sats you have with your life. Jason says, sub to Rick Costa. Yes, that's what we like. That's what we like. <clears throat> 
What about what's happening on the zap.stream over here? Costello says, thanks, U.S. government, for the sats on sale yesterday. No doubt. Crypto Ethan says, watch what they do, not what they say. Great advice. That's, that is such great advice with everything. Everything you see. Don't watch what they say. Watch what they do in regards to BlackRock. Crypto Ethan also says, these fucks make public statements to FUD and shake out the little guys and get themselves a discount. Yep. They've been doing it for many years, and I think that they don't really care about the discount so much anymore. They they simply care about getting your Bitcoin. Because what we know, what most of the world hasn't figured out yet, fully figured out yet, is that there are only so many Bitcoin. We cannot go out to the mountains and find more Bitcoin. We cannot issue more Bitcoin. We cannot print Bitcoin. There's only so much Bitcoin available. And when there's this kind of demand and this short of supply, this is what the people have to do. They have to spread FUD to try to shake guys like me, guys and girls like you out of it so then they can buy more Bitcoin. Ballsy Golf, wow, over in the Zap.stream chat. Love to see that. And Letha, Zap's 420 sats. <laughs> I love that. 420 sats. Where are we today on the... On the old having schedule speaking of 420 i'm definitely going to do a show 420 by the way i just haven't determined what kind of shape i'm going to be in for that show <laughs> actually it's supposed to be it's it keeps going down so we might actually get into april 19th soon because it keeps going it keeps coming faster so according to this it says let me bring this up 17 days, zero hours, and 50 minutes is the estimate. Reminder one more time, this is not based on time or dates. It's based on this. And as we know, every 10 minutes, a new block is mined. So that's kind of how they do it on average. Are we okay? Are we freezing here? The internet doesn't like the, that block clock very much. <laughs> okay. Sonner, that's a tough name to pronounce. Sonner Sheen said we're, we've completed inning one of two. What? First of all, who the hell is Sonner Sheen? And what sport has two innings in it? Sonner Sheen sounds like a person I would not trust in Bitcoin, personally. Oh, I got rid of the Zap.stream. Okay, let's keep moving here. we got one more thing to talk about, and then we're going to get to the meat and potatoes of today's show. What is the last one here? <clears throat> oh, this was, uh, this was a good one. So th this is another example of this. We just talked about the, the Black Rocks of the world. Oh, Brennan said he's the moron selling. Oh, gotcha. That makes sense. He's the moron selling at grayscale. So we hit the nail on the head there. He is a moron. Son, son and Sheen. Okay. So this is uh, following up with the BlackRock stuff and who's getting into Bitcoin. So this says new South Carolina's Burkett Financial Services disclosed ownership of 602 shares in iShares Bitcoin Trust, iBit, and 630 shares in ProShares Bitcoin Strategy ETF, BDO, is the first TradFi institution to gain Bitcoin exposure to, <laughs> via ETFs. Okay, so that last line there, it's the first TradFi institution to gain Bitcoin exposure via ETFs. So on one, on one hand here, these guys are buying BlackRock ETFs and BlackRock saying the game's over. Wall Street's already in. There's going to be no more price increases in Bitcoin. That's what BlackRock's saying. In reality, this tweet says that it is these guys are the South Carolina's Burkett Financial Services are the first TradFi institution to gain Bitcoin exposure that they announced. So at the end of every quarter, these public companies have to announce their new holdings on their quarterly reports. 
And so this is the first trad uh, uh, first trad fi institution to have Bitcoin. So BlackRock saying it's over. This tweet saying this was the very first institution, trad fi institution to gain Bitcoin. So if it's the first, I would say that there's probably going to be a few more to come there. So watch what they do, not what they say. Follow Crypto Heathen's advice there. Think think about how many South Carolina's Burkett Financial Services are out there in the world. Think about how many companies are out there, insurance companies, uh, endowments, funds, all of these. I think there's 330 million companies on earth. Every one of those companies is going to have some Bitcoin on their balance sheet. How much they get will depend on how soon they get into Bitcoin. So that has been the Bitcoin news for today. Big shout out to Bitcoin news. Supporter of the show, friend of the show. Okay, the computer's quieted down here. I think we're okay. So here we go. We're talking about we're talking about the Flintstones today. We and how we're moving out of the Flintstone era and into the Jetson era. Crypto Heathen in the Zaptot stream says it's not about the price, the cost for them. It's about the accumulation. Yes, sir. He also sent a 69 sat zap. Appreciate it, everybody over on Zaptot stream. Appreciate it. Okay. So here's what we got going. I'm going to start with a quote. This is from Amy B. I don't know where she's from. I saw it on Telegram. This is from Amy B. And then we're going to talk about things in a little bit further depth. So this is the quote from Amy B. It's really quite simple. Bitcoin is sound money and the alternative to their slave currency, fiat or CBDC, for the digital age, so CBDC. We are not going back to the Flintstone era where they use shiny rocks whether you like it or not. The sooner you, re you realize this fact, the better off you'll be. Cheers to those who have figured it out. So some a great quote there from Amy B. And it's probably worth repeating. It's really quite simple. Bitcoin is sound money and the alternative to their slave currency for the digital age. We are not going back to the Flintstone era where they use shiny rocks for payment. The digital age is here to stay, whether you like it or not. And I actually underline that, whether you like it or not. The sooner you realize this fact, the better off you'll be. Cheers to those who have figured it out. Cheers to you. Cheers to us. We have figured it out. Because technology only moves one way. Just just take a, take a second here and think about it. Do you think that we're ever going to go back? to writing out checks and cashing those at the bank? Do you think we're ever going to go back to carrying around a bunch of coins in our pockets and, and fake plastic bills in our pockets when we have this thing in our phone that can do all this for us? All of it for us. And so what I'm going to talk about today, just kind of piggybacking off of that, is I'm going to talk about how different the future is going to look and, and kind of how we're transitioning into that already and why Bitcoin's going to win in every aspect of this. And then, of course, not just talking about things, but talking about what we can do to prepare for that. So think about it. Let's, let's put ourselves in the, because this is kind of my theory on this show, is that I think that in 10 years from now, or, or sooner than that, I think that we're going to have a totally different dynamic in terms of place. I don't think we're going to have employees. I don't think we're going to have employers. I think that everybody is basically going to be their own boss. Everybody's going to have their own business and it might look a lot differently. And actually, before we get to the rest of this stuff, I do want to sh uh, share a clip here. Good thing I thought of that because it wasn't on my list, but I do have it ready to go. So before we go any further, any further into that, I'm going to show this clip and see what you think about it. This is talking about entrepreneurs, and Bitcoin and kind of what the future is going to look like. So this is Bobby Shell talking about 
businesses in Bitcoin and what the future of entrepreneurship will look like. So here we go. Yeah, thinking, tying it back to Bitcoin, like I think one of the reasons why, like, every, like again, everyone wants to hold Bitcoin right now because that's the main wealth transfer that we're all interested in. Like we discovered a new form of money. It's far superior. It's worth a lot more than $50,000 or whatever it's trading today. So people are just kind of sitting on their hands holding Bitcoin. I feel like, and let me know if you agree or disagree with this, that as Bitcoin becomes adopted and maybe Bitcoin reaches gold parity or you know obviously significantly higher but starting there maybe then when the upside potential is significantly less we're going to see a lot more entrepreneurship from early bitcoiners because then they're like okay now i'm sitting on this newfound wealth i can keep holding bitcoin but the returns aren't going to be you know a keg or a 50 percent just sitting on cold storage bitcoin maybe it'll be down to 10% or 20% or what like sailor says the 14% as his like long term uh, yeah. return is that when you know once the return is less the expected future return is less is that when people are going to go out there and acquire all these smbs or invest in startups yeah um i think people who are entrepreneurs and like the risk and like like owning a business like there's people who like, I know a guy on Twitter, he acquired an HVAC company and he's uh, since acquiring it a year and a half ago, it's grown 160%. So that guy is destroying Bitcoiners, you know, but are you the type of person who can do that? You really have to ask yourself that question. But to your, to your first point, when the price goes up to 500K, will more people step into entrepreneurship? I believe yes. And there's two reasons. One, whenever that much value is locked in Bitcoin and it's not moving, the government will likely offer tax incentives. You know, it's just like with real estate, like they have these incentives like bonus depreciation, cost segregation studies, so that these people who are taking risks can reduce their tax consequence and continue more investment now into the future. Same thing with the 1031 exchange, whenever you sell an asset and you roll it into another one, it frees capital up so that now that you know you've lived in this for a while or you improved it whatever your story is you now can like move into another asset and do it again like this is how the government gets money to move in tax efficient ways the same thing is going to come to bitcoin they're going to see that these like just normal everyday people or rich uh, regardless uh, have so much wealth locked up they're going to say hey when you go to spend it no t taxes when you go invest in small businesses no taxes when you go to do whatever. And they're going to give people an incentive to get rid of it. And the other thing, I think over this time frame, a lot of folks like over the next 10 years, they're going to continue trying to level up their job, their skills, and they're going to build skill sets that make them more likely to be an entrepreneur. Like every day, like if you're not growing your skills, there's people in other parts of the world that are going to replace you for a much lower cost. Like there are so many people in other countries that are way better workers than a lot of people I've worked with in America. And it's pretty neck breaking. It's happening. And I think a lot of folks are going to be very intentional to build new skill sets. And after doing so, and after getting price appreciation in Bitcoin, they're going to say, I can do this. You know, I can be an entrepreneur and they're going to take that leap. So I'm with you 100 percent on that, man. It's totally going to happen. Yeah. Do you think that new technology and things like AI? So it's pretty interesting to listen to that because that's kind of what I've been talking about on the show here for the last couple months, for sure. That's kind of been the theme of this whole show is that it's it's one thing to buy Bitcoin and hold on to it. But the, the real fun part of this and how people are actually going to change their lives in a positive way is by launching businesses in Bitcoin. And so I, I want you to change your mindset a little bit in terms of like when we think of starting a business or um what would you call it? A startup. People think it's very, it has to be very like Facebooky or or the brand new idea of the of the world that's going to change everything. And you're going to do it for a couple of years and then you're going to sell out and then you're going to retire at age 25. That that's kind of the mentality I think that we've had for like the last 10 or 15 years through this tech bubble that we've had. And I think that we need to change our mindset in terms of whatever it is that you do, whatever skills you have. That's what the business you're going to have. Because let, let's take a step back here and let's think about what things look like today, what things look like 10 years ago, and what 
we kind of think things will look like 10 years from now. So let's think about this. What in the past, why, what brought us to the whole employer, employee, nine to five, going to work for somebody else, getting paid every two weeks? Why, why was that normalized? Well, it's because we didn't have the technology to do better than that. That's the best that we could do. So I got about four or five things here that I want to talk about in terms of how the, the barriers, I guess you'd say, in terms of starting a business, what they were versus what they are now. So the first one was that it was very expensive to launch a business. So you needed financing. 10 or 20 years ago, in order to start a business, you had to go through this whole process. It was very difficult. The barrier to entry was high. Nobody could just go out there and start a business without any sort of contacts and just start making a living off of that. It was very expensive. You need to go to the bank. You need to get a loan. I think the lending was a little bit differently then. They didn't require as much capital, but it was just more expensive. You had to jump through a lot more hoops in order to start earning some money. Today, regardless of you know, I think a lot of people still live in that old mentality where they have to go through the business number. They have to go through the whole setup of all that stuff. You don't. I mean, if you're operating a lot in the fiat world, it's probably a good idea. There are certain thresholds in terms of your tax remittances like GST and PST here in, in Manitoba. That's something that I would never mess around with. But outside of that, there's really nothing that you need to do, especially if you're going to be accepting Bitcoin. I don't know what the you still have to report it as income, obviously, if you choose to go down that route. But anybody can do it. Whatever skills you have, you can get on. Just start making connections with people. Start offering your services, your products for Bitcoin, for fiat. And this is something that you can do at in mornings and at night. You don't have to quit your job tomorrow. But it's very easy now to launch a business. You can make your own logo even. Think about 10 years ago, you had to pay a, a graphic designer or a, a company a thousand or two dollars to make you a logo where we have the technology now to go onto Canva, take a template, add some font to it, and all of a sudden you have a logo. That didn't exist 10 years ago. So that's one, the, the barrier, the financing aspect and, and to launch a business. And so to take it one step further than this, and I think that why this is applicable to a lot of people here is because you're probably holding Bitcoin right now. You're probably saving in Bitcoin right now. And so think about as this goes along here over these next couple of years, all of a sudden that Bitcoin becomes more valuable and you can shave off some of that or go to the bank and take out a loan against that Bitcoin, which is almost, they've made it almost impossible for somebody in the current system, in the Flintstone era to do that saving in fiat. It's just not feasible. So there's going to be a bunch of Bitcoiners, I think, in the next couple of years who do quit their job, do launch their own business and use the Bitcoin, use the increase in purchasing power of Bitcoin to help finance that business. Advertising. Think about a business 20 years ago. If you wanted to launch a business and you want to tell people about it, think about how you did that before the internet. You would have to pay for radio ads. You'd have to pay for newspaper ads. You'd have to pay for uh, whatever it may be, a Super Bowl ad, any sort of ad. And it's very difficult. Not, not the average business could not afford to do that. And it's different if you're in the local. If you're a local business, you can just you know get an ad in the newspaper. But it was still fairly expensive. Today, you can. there's so many tools out there. There's so many resources, so many platforms that all you need is time. It doesn't cost you anything anymore. All you need is time. You create a logo for free. You launch your business for free. You start promoting your business for free. And you do, maybe you do like a $100 gift card giveaway for sharing this. And all of a sudden you get your business out in front of 30,000 people in your market. Costs are almost zero for that, to do that. So that's number one. And it's also, it's very cheap and it's going to be based on your reputation. So it's no longer just who has the much, who has the most money to dump into different ads, radio ads, newspaper ads. It's your reputation. It's word of mouth. So the best thing that you can be doing right now to set yourself up for that is getting onto Noster 
and start making different connections within the Bitcoin community for when that time comes, you have a huge network of people who are willing to buy and sell services and products for Bitcoin with you. So quickly here, I'm going to take a little break, take a little breather. Good morning, Adam. Big shout out to Adam as well. I want to give him a shout out. So him and his wife launched a YouTube channel last night, I think was their first video. And I forget what the channel's called, but where can I, how can I get this out to? Maybe I'll put a link to a few things. I'm going to put a link to Gray Ridge. I'm going to put a link to Rick's channel and I'm going to put a link to Adam's new channel and everybody, Adam's talking about fitness stuff. So that's what, uh, head over there, click the link in the description, give him a subscribe on YouTube and help him give a boost to his channel. Please. Costello says, what would the process of using Bitcoin as collateral at a bank look like? Pretty simple. You go to the bank, you say, I want some money. They say, what do you have for collateral? You say, Bitcoin. <laughs> and yes, this works already. I think that right now we're at the stage where banks really don't understand the whole ins and outs of Bitcoin. They will. Though there will probably come a time where you actually have to leave a key with them, like a key to your Bitcoin, set up some sort of multi-signature setup with the bank for that specific Bitcoin attached to the loan. And so we're not there yet. What you can do now and what I have done for my own life is just when you do your net worth statement, you just add Bitcoin on there. Don't say how much you have. That's the number one rule in Bitcoin is never tell anybody how much Bitcoin you have. But there will come a time where the banks are, are on to this. They want people to use Bitcoin as collateral and they will be requiring you to hold that Bitcoin with them. We're not there yet because mostly because banks don't have a clue what's going on with Bitcoin yet. Most banks. But you also have to think about the that process. So I think that that's what the banks will look like in the future is they'll actually be a custodian for people to take out currency or to take out money using Bitcoin as collateral and they'll hold the key to that. You can pay them to hold the key, even if you don't have any collateral with them. But the, I think that's what the future of banking will look like. And the ones who actually get there are, are going to be the ones who have the best customer service and the ones who embrace Bitcoin the fastest. All the other banks will be gone. But the ones who embrace Bitcoin and start teaching their clients about it, um, the sooner the better. But also customer service. If, if you've been somebody, if you've contacted any company in these last couple of years, the one thing about AI is that they're trying to replace customer service with AI. And I don't know about you, but I would much rather speak to a human being than a robot about anything, any topic, especially when it has to do with my money. So I, I do think that the banks who really put a focus on customer service and embrace Bitcoin are going to be the ones who are around in five years. And they'll also be loaning against people's Bitcoin. Because think about it. And, and this was something that really hit home with uh, a couple that I was talking to last week. But think about this. Think about what the banking looked like in terms of farmers, land, collateral, buildings. And so that's kind of how it looks like right now. If you wanted to take out some money, if you wanted to go buy a truck, if you're a farmer, you would put your clot or your land up as collateral. You wouldn't sell any of that land. You wouldn't go off and shave a piece of that land off to buy a truck. You would just take a loan out against that land using it as collateral. So that's fine. And it's going to be the exact same in the future with Bitcoin. If you need a new truck, you're not going to sell some of your Bitcoin for that truck. You're going to go to the bank. You're going to take out a loan against it. And they're going to hold that Bitcoin on your behalf or some of it. And think about it from the bank's perspective. This is why it makes so much sense to them because it's not just for the consumer side of things, it's for the bank. If you take out a loan and all of a sudden you can't make those payments anymore, how easy would it be for the bank to either just take your Bitcoin, put it on their reserve or sell that Bitcoin? Think about how liquid Bitcoin is compared to land. If you want to sell a chunk of your land, if, if, if you couldn't make your payments anymore and you had to sell a chunk of land, think about the process there. 
there has to be a market for it, which there probably is for farmland. But it would take a couple of weeks, a couple of months. You have to get lawyers involved. You have to get realtors involved. There's a whole process there. And it's only applicable to the local market there. It's a much smaller demographic. With Bitcoin, if they're, if they're using that and they need to turn around and sell that tomorrow, they could. Because it's very liquid. It has worldwide demand. And you can sell it instantly. So... I think that banks not only will be, once they figure this out, they will not only be embracing Bitcoin, but they'll actually be incentivizing people to do that and going after clients who hold Bitcoin because that's much better collateral, in my opinion, than some of the stuff we have right now. So there you go. That is Adam's channel right there, sweating and smiling together. Koshiel says, do you think they would keep some Bitcoin or just take interest in fiat? Yeah, I wouldn't be giving them any Bitcoin for the loan. That's for sure. They'll definitely have some Bitcoin on their reserve. That'll be like the, the cash they used to have in the vaults. It'll be Bitcoin now. But I'm not going to be giving them any Bitcoin for the loans. They're just going to make sure I still have it. Justine says, the future sounds exciting. Good morning from LA. Very exciting. That's what, that's what people are missing most out on Bitcoin right now. They see the price going up. They think that they're going to get rich off it, but they have no idea what kind of impact it's actually going to have on our world for the better. Is it, I think it's Yan. I'm going to go with Yan. Yan says, great show today. Got to go. We'll watch the rest later tonight. The One of the newest members of Living in the Future. All the way from, actually, I shouldn't dox. Shouldn't dox. Ballsy Golf over on Zap.Stream says, walked into my bank, Scotia, and asked to talk to someone about Bitcoin. They had nobody. Oh. Oh. Everybody's so far behind. Or we're so far ahead. I don't know what it is. But anyways, put that on hold for a second because I have a solution for you, Ballsy Golf. So that so we talked about financing, we talked about advertising. The next thing I want to talk about is he is getting paid. This was a big part of why companies existed. Is because they had the budget, the marketing budget. They could go out and find buyers for their products. They would connect, they would find the jobs, and then they would hire people to, to perform those jobs. So that whole process there of them actually finding buyers, connecting, at the time there was no internet. They were phoning each other. They were building these connections uh, or visiting them in person. <clears throat> and that was the, the benefit of, of having a company is you were the person you had the budget to be able to do that. And then you would hire somebody to do that job and you would pay them two weeks later in fiat. You'd send them a check or give them a pay stub. They'd go down to the bank, cash it in. But think about, a, think about the future of Bitcoin and what that would look like. You're not going to be getting paid per day. You're going to be getting paid per job, which makes sense. Think about if you've ever worked a nine to five job, think about for the most part how <laughs> somebody's calling me from California. San Andreas. Should I pick it up? Should we do it? Nah, better not. That's just asking for trouble. So wh where was I there? Yeah, think about that. Nine to five job. Think about how much time is wasted during the day for somebody. Just not not because, you know, you're just getting paid regardless of what you do. Maybe you play a game of solitaire. Maybe you check Instagram for a while. You're still getting paid by the company for that. And that's why there's such a spread in terms of the companies charging more for you and paying you a small amount. That's the difference there, right? So a perfect example of this is when I was an accountant, my bill out rate was like 200 per hour, I think, maybe higher than that, 220 when I left. So that's what, whenever I did a job for somebody, that's what the accounting firm would charge clients, $220 per hour. I think that's what it was. But they would actually pay me about a tenth of that. <laughs> so that's the spread there. And people think that they're you know going to work, getting paid. They can do whatever they want. But the reality is that if you're actually if you're not actually making the company money, they're not going to pay you enough, right? And during tax season, of course, we're definitely earning that. But that's the spread there. So with Bitcoin, if you think about it differently, what it's going to look like for us 
is that you're going to be getting paid per job. You're not going to have to wait two weeks to get a check, a pay stub. At the end of every day or at the end of every hour, depending on your job that you do, you're going to get paid in Bitcoin with Lightning. Which makes sense because we can do it. The system's already built. We can do it today. Why aren't we doing it today? Because everything takes time. That's why. So that's a big aspect of it. Think about the meetings. Everybody had to go into the office to meet each other, to share ideas, to talk about different things. Everybody had to have a, have a centralized spot. Do we have to do that today? As much as I hate Zoom calls, that has been one of the greatest things to come out of the big illness in 2020 was the fact that everybody knows how to use Zoom now. Everybody knows how to use these uh, meeting, virtual meeting websites. Think about how much time and gas money you save just for instead of driving to the office for 45 minutes in the city and wasting gas. If you can just meet somebody at home, save yourself not only just the, the gas money, but the time there. Think about how much more you can do. So in the last one here that I want to talk about, because we are running close to an hour here, not that it's a big deal, but I don't want to make these forever episodes. But the last one here is like the low level work. So you'd have the owners, you'd have the middle management, and then you'd have the lower level. These low level workers. Oh, we go out. Are we down? Are we down? No, just very laggy. Fucking internet. <sighs> Frustrating. Anyways, just as I just as I pump up the internet and how good it is, <laughs> goes down. <laughs> so the last one here is the low level work. So we did need people to schedule things. We did need people to write reports. We did need people to fill out these spreadsheets and create a report out of that. We don't need that anymore. We have AI and AI is very early days. It's only going to get better. What AI is going to be, be able to accomplish far more than anybody can even anticipate at this stage. So we don't need that low level work anymore. You're going to be the one doing that work or you're going to be using the AI to do that work for you. And you're going to be the one connecting, making connections and finding work. And the middle managers there, the, the people who basically looked after these workers who were the, actually the ones doing the work, what are they going to do? That's the question. What are they going to do? Dan says, first banks were blacksmiths. Future banks may be current custodians like, un, I think that's Unchained, CASA, etc. I agree with that. I think that that's exactly what the future of banks is going to look like. Brent says, I would not be likely to even do multi-sig with, uh, multi with a traditional bank unless we're BlackRock or Fidelity. Likely never a regional bank. Really? That's an interesting take. I guess that's you're probably talking about the US. I would much rather use my own bank, my credit union, to do that for me. I trust them a lot more than like a TD Bank, Scotiabank, BlackRock. I would much rather use a regional bank. I don't know, maybe I'm crazy, but that's my spin on it. And Rock and Roll says AI will, AI has already destroyed Hollywood. Hollywood's, have you heard anything from Hollywood in the last four years? It was very interesting to see during the big illness, all these celebrities were coming out talking about um, talking about the, the shots, talking about the what we need to do to keep everybody safe. And then all of a sudden they all just disappeared. I haven't heard a peep from anybody in Hollywood for like two or three years now. And if you can if you think about how it was before, we got all of our influence from Hollywood, all of it. Celebrities were like the people that everybody trusted. everybody took their, their word on on products on different things that's who we put our blind faith in was hollywood pretty much just uh they were our, our role models 
which is disgusting after everything we've learned in the last four years. So I think that Hollywood is already dead. They're, they're completely irrelevant. I think that they're, something's happening there for sure. I don't know what it is. I'm not going to try to pretend like I do, but something definitely happened in Hollywood. So AI is going to continue to destroy it for sure. Nobody's going to make movies anymore. It's all going to be AI. You're going to be able to type in on your laptop. I want to see a movie with who's my favorite uh, actors. Denzel Washington. Uh, who else do I like? I don't know. I don't even know any celebrities anymore. Chris Pratt, maybe. Maybe throw Tiger Woods in there for just for some, some laughs, uh, some golf content. But you're going to be able to write your own script and you're going to be able to watch. Uh, you're going to say, I want a two-hour movie with these characters in it, with this plot. And that's what you're going to watch that night. So... That's what people will do for mindless entertainment. But I do, I really believe that there's a future in Zap.Stream. There's a future in YouTube. The people who actually want to learn and want to spend their time watching content that's going to further their growth. That's, uh, I think, is going to be a big part as well. So let's round things out here. Because this is the important part. What can we do? What can we do? Who's Margot Robbie? Margot Robbie. I I will forget her because I'd never thought of her before. <laughs> okay. Too distracted here. Uh, so Crypto Heathen says future banks will just be smart contracts. They're quite literally obsolete. I, I do think that they'll have, there'll be something there where they hold their keys though. And I think that people still put a lot of trust in banks especially the older generation. I think that they won't get into Bitcoin until they know that somebody's going to be able to bail them out. If they were to do something wrong with their Bitcoin, for the most part, I'm not speaking in absolutes here. Not all older generation is like that, but the mo for the most part. And Hol uh, Crypto Ethan says, Hollywood is probably busy doing some end of time satanic rituals right now. Yeah, I, I just can't believe we let that kind of... How is that kept under the rug for so long? But that's the power of the internet. That's the power of this connection of people. And that's kind of what's happening right now is the whole human consciousness is kind of waking up to all this right now. And that's going to change everything. It is. And kind of going back to the very first quote that started this whole thing is that it's really quite simple. Bitcoin is sound money and the alternative to their slave currency for the digital age. So we have this. We have these tools now. Noster is going to be the new internet. Bitcoin is going to be the new freedom currency. And that's what we're going to operate in. We, we won't even really need to pay attention to anything going on elsewhere. Okay. So here's what we need to do. If you are somebody who's working a nine to five job, if you are somebody who's maybe in between jobs, but you have a lot of skills right now and you want to start offering those products or services to the world, this is what you need to do. How can we take advantage of this time? Because it, it's going to be a small window. Eventually, everybody's kind of go, going to get into this, I believe. Everybody's going to be their own business. But the ones who, who build the foundation now, who get the systems in place to earn recurring Bitcoin or earn recurring revenue every month for what you do, that's where we need to start. So first of all, Bitcoin. And if you're watching this show, Hopefully you have some Bitcoin, but maybe not. And if you have some Bitcoin, get some more Bitcoin. Because that's what we're going to be using for the future here. If you have, if you want to launch your own business, if you need the tools, if you need the equipment, depending on what kind of business you're going to be launching, there are some costs there involved. And so the earlier you can buy Bitcoin and hold on to it and wait for that moment, that's when you're going to be able to capitalize on this. So get some Bitcoin. That's what you're going to be used for equipment, your marketing budget in the future, all of this. As the value goes up, your leverage, you're going to be able to leverage that Bitcoin much more effectively. And the other part of this, and I want to talk about something here because we saw a chat over on Zap.Stream from Ballsy Golf. He said, walked into my bank, Scotia, and asked to talk to somebody about Bitcoin. And they had nobody there. So if you are somebody who's in that position, if you do have a nine to five job, you've probably been paying into some sort of retirement fund 
pension fund, IRA, whatever that is, you've probably been paying into that for a lot of years now. And you want to start transitioning that, transitioning that into Bitcoin. So you go to Scotiabank, they have nobody there. You go to your financial advisor, he's completely unaware of what's happening here. He's going to sell you the newest product in their portfolio. So what do you do? Because I do think that that's where a lot of this could come from. If you are somebody who's in that system and wants to use your energy, your capital that you built up through the years, and you want to put that into Bitcoin to get exposure to it and be able to capitalize on that leverage, you want to get that in Bitcoin. And so what I'm going to tell you today is to contact either myself or my good friend, Chrysler, and he's over at... He's, he's here in Manitoba in Canada. So if you're in the U S it probably isn't applicable to you, but he is over at Parkview private wealth management. So he just launched him and uh, a few coworkers just launched their own financial advisory firm. He, he loves Bitcoin. He is one of the financial advisors who is embracing Bitcoin. And I think he's going to do very well for that. So if you are somebody who is in, that system, if you still have a bunch of capital in that system and you want to get some exposure to Bitcoin, either cash some of it out and hold your own keys or start quickly, simply by buying some of the ETFs. And then the beauty of that is if you do that now, you you start building your, your systems, get your foundation in place, get your business ready to go. You cash those out, the ETFs. You can do it in a tax-free way here in Canada probably in the U S as well. I'm not as familiar with it there, but you cash that out tax free. You use that to start your business and you either buy some half Bitcoin, half operating costs, and then you start your business from there. So you not only remove your energy from the old system, but you move, you remove your capital from the old system. And the best time to be doing that is today. So like I said, if your bank's not friendly to it, if your advisor is not friendly to it, Reach out to me. I'll put you in touch with Chrysler or check out. Uh, I'll put a link in the description as well for his page and his email and get in touch with him. There are there have been some people within this community already who have reached out to him and gone on to Bitcoin. So big shout out to Chrysler um, for embracing Bitcoin. Like I said, it's going to be the banks, the win, who embrace Bitcoin and the financial advisors who embrace Bitcoin who are going to win and help you out. That's the main thing. If you are somebody who's stuck in that, he can help you. So the last part here, no, second second part here. So let's get some Bitcoin. Either buy some, take some out of the old system, but get some Bitcoin so you can ride this wave and have some leverage in the future. Number two is learn some skills. Whatever that is, if you already have some skills, further them. If you're somebody who's going to work every day and you're worried that AI is going to replace your job, start learning AI, start learning how to use AI to help your job every day, help you do a better job every day. Because the further you can do that, the more time you're going to buy in that system. And then when you're ready to take that leap from that employer into your own business, you just have much more time there. So start learning skills, start learning about AI, start learning about technology, start learning about everything that you can do to set yourself up for this future. And that could be something also like you know, getting your plumber certificate, your electrical, your whatever, the journeyman, whatever that is, whatever you want to do, start learning different skills that you're going to be able to utilize in this future when you want to have your own business. Do it in the mornings, do it at night, but start learning new skills. And unfortunately, one of my main skills is spreadsheets. <laughs> and AI would definitely replace that. So think about that, learn some new skills and figure out the best way to position yourself for the future. And the last part is look in the description. It says living in the future. There's a link there. Go to there, check it out. What, if you sign up for seven days for free, you're going to be able to see all the videos we've done so far. All the, the Patreon shows have a plus, plus, plus in the title. So you could actually sign up if you want to dedicate your next seven days to this. Sign up, watch the videos we've done, check out the ideas, the ventures, what we're building in there. 
because we are living in the future there. That's what it's called. And that's what we're doing. We're becoming better Bitcoiners. We're building businesses within Bitcoin and earning Bitcoin. And we're growing our network. So then when this time comes, we have all these connections built, all these networks built. And that's that's living in the future. So like I said, check it out. Sign up for the free seven days. It's five bucks a month after that. If you talk to any person who's in that group already, I think that the value they've got already from that without even really getting started has exceeded the $5 a month. We just have, we have to have some sort of friction there. So there's no spam, but the group chat in there, if you are somebody who honestly, this would be perfect for somebody who's either wanting to start a business in Bitcoin or just wants to learn more about Bitcoin all day in there. There's just people asking a question and then two or three people answering that question and talking through things with each other. I've never seen anything like that before in my four years of Bitcoin. So it is, that's just one part of it. The value add for that is the network, but we're also building things in there and talking about different ideas, putting things in place and creating new ventures that are earning Bitcoin. We already have one. In a couple of weeks that we've had this membership, we already have one business that's not only started, but earning Bitcoin. Pretty fucking cool. So consider that. That's what I would say. Get some Bitcoin, learn some skills and join living in the future. And that's it. We have to, we have to take advantage of these times because it's not going to be here forever. So we're moving from the Flintstone era into the Jetson era. Start making that transition yourself. So with that, another long episode, holy cow. Honest to God, when I started these, when I started these daily shows, I thought it was going to be about 10 or 15 minutes. I didn't think anybody would be in the chat and look where we are. I appreciate everybody so much for being here, for being in the comments, for adding some value to this. It is a very unique show. We talk logic, we talk common sense, and we have so many knowledgeable people within the chat who correct me when I'm wrong, but also add a lot of value to the discussion here. So big shout out to you. I appreciate you very much for being here. Press the like, as Rick says, on the way out. And I'm going to put all these links below. So we got Rick's channel. We got Adam's channel. We got Grace, uh, Gray Ridge Coffee, and of course, our buddy Chrysler. If you want to start taking your money out of the old system, figuring out the best way to do that to get some exposure to Bitcoin, get in touch with Chrysler. So all of those links are going to be below. And if you have any questions for me, shoot me an email, 88sats at proton.me, 88sats at proton.me. Tomorrow is Thursday. It's our favorite, favorite day of the week. We do a Q&A. So if you have any questions about today's show or anything in Bitcoin or anything on your mind, send an email today and we'll talk about it on tomorrow's show. So there you have it. And if you're if you're just somebody who is new into Bitcoin and you don't really know what the best way to navigate within living in the future or different things that I offer you, just shoot me an email and I'll point you in the right direction. So with that, I hope you have the best Wednesday of your life, the best hump day of your life. And we got our, no, I don't know if we're doing it tonight. Never mind. But have a great day. Calm, cheerful Wednesday. And let's keep building here. Let's create the future that we want to live in. Have a great day. And we'll talk to you first thing tomorrow morning for the live Q&A. And before we do that, I want to bring this up just because it's good to, it's good to share love, good to share support. And that's what we're doing here. Appreciate you, Brennan. Appreciate all of you. We'll talk to you first thing tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.